Hey guys, welcome back to Techno. I'm Phil Torres, joined today by Marita Davison and Dr. Shinny Samara. Now, Shinny, you got to do a very interesting interview under the sea. Yeah, Skype is a beautiful thing, and I got to interview the grandson of Jacques Cousteau, Fabian, who is actually 60 feet underneath water. Let's take a look. Jacques Cousteau, the legendary master of sea exploration, gave the world a glance into the depths of human possibilities underwater. Cousteau once said, the best way to observe a fish is to become a fish. His grandson, Fabien Cousteau, took that advice to heart. Fabian and a small team of other divers called Aquarius, the world's last undersea marine laboratory, home for 31 days. I got a chance to chat with Fabian about his latest research in Aquarius. Okay, um, so Fabian, your location in Florida Keys, is that crucial to um, the scientific research that you're collecting? Well, this area is crucial for several reasons. First of all, it's in a subtropical environment, which is conducive to working long hours, but also it's in the crosshairs of some of these major issues, both on the level that we're only nine nautical miles uh, offshore where there's a lot of human activity. So that's incredible. I mean, what is the focus of their research down there on Aquarius? So we're looking at both uh, climate change and, and pollution related issues. So climate change related issues are <laughs> Apparently they're having a good time out there. What are they doing? Uh, they're supposed to be at the bottom looking at sponges and coral and setting up some of our high-end equipment to monitor in uh, both microscopic and macroscopic fashion some of the science and data that we're collecting from those sponges and those corals to be able to bring back a better image of what's happening on the pollution runoff issues that we're having all around the world, especially here, but also with regard to climate change, which is a global issue, and the acidification problems, amongst other things, that are affecting our coral reefs, as well as other critters, other biodiversity in these undersea cities, if you will. One of the major obstacles of studying the deep sea are short dive times. In Aquarius, Fabian and his team have the luxury of living on the ocean floor, never having to resurface point is to be out there in the water column diving as much as you can in a day. It allows us the ability to dive 6, 8, 10, 12 hours a day. We're at three atmospheres, meaning we're subject to three times the pressure that you are on land. And that gives us um, the ability to go out into the water as long as we need to. Although the research opportunities at this depth are fantastic, the actual living facilities on Aquarius are a little cramped, as Fabian showed us. We've got Ryan and Mark, our habitat technicians. There they are right there. Uh, behind Mark is our bunk room. That's where the six of us sleep with the world's best view at the end. There's a viewport at the end. We generate our own air supply from the surface buoy that comes down here. We have three days of air supply, as well as battery power. Uh, right here, we've got our galley, which is where we cook. It's hot water and microwave only. Uh, as the partial pressure of oxygen down here uh, would exacerbate any kind of fire. This is the kind of food that we eat. It's uh, in these freeze-dried packets. Um, the basic, uh, and basically the pre-prepared -pre food that you add hot water to and have a meal. I'm here in the dry lab, which is uh, full of equipment right now. And the wet porch is the place where we get in and out of the habitat. It's basically our front door to the ocean world. The opportunities to learn on Aquarius still harken back to Jacques Cousteau's Calypso. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, the days of Calypso, my, my grandfather's ship, was the staging grounds and the character, I guess, for 50 years of ocean exploration. And a lot of the vision that he had of things to come have actually come to fruition, and we're using those things today. Fabian stresses the fact that there is an urgent need for more ocean research, insisting that less than 5% of the sea has been explored. As a matter of fact, Aquarius, this habitat, is the station that the NASA astronauts use to train before they go into outer space because it's so similar 
to the conditions that they're going to be subject to. Space exploration and inner space exploration are of paramount importance to be able to further our knowledge of all those technologies and all those cures uh, for those things that ail our species. It took Fabian and his team 18 and a half hours to resurface and adjust back to a land-dwelling atmosphere, setting a new record for the longest stationary research mission underwater. Fabian continues his calling to bring more awareness to the importance of ocean research. I think this has been a monumental success on multiple levels. People really do have a passion for the oceans if engaged. It's all about education. You know, my, again, I hate to default back to my grandfather, but since we've, you know, we've been talking about him a lot, he used to say people protect what they love. How can people protect what they don't understand? And hopefully we were able to let a few more understand why the oceans are so special, so magical, so mysterious, and so fragile and such an integral part of our lives. I just love seeing that this legendary family name is carrying on in such an inspiring way. It is amazing how this curiosity for deep sea is just ingrained in their DNA. I mean, it's just everyone in the family seems to be involved in underwater exploration. But with that many family members actually spending their careers exploring this stuff, only 5% of the ocean has been mapped out, really. You say we need more Cousteaus? <laughs> Yeah. Well, and it's, I mean, you're right. It's really important that the, the sea, the ocean, is pretty much the final frontier in terms of understanding how the planet works, from at least from an ecological perspective. It's really important and really difficult work, but I'm glad they're doing it. That's why I find it so important that Fabian actually does throw himself into the experiment and become almost like a guinea pig. I think it really adds weight to the research that he's doing. Rita, you've worked a lot in conservation, a big ecosystem analyses. How important are the oceans? Well, think about it. The oceans cover two thirds of our planet. So they don't have a small impact and they are important in terms of regulating climate, in terms of providing important sources of protein for people to eat. I mean, the list goes on and on. So doing this type of research is, is really important. It is more challenging to appreciate just how important this research is. And it's a bit similar to space research. A lot of people don't often appreciate just how much science we get from doing research in space. And it's the same with aquanautics. You know, I always think of space, the final frontier, but there are so many of those final frontiers here on Earth, too, that we have yet to explore. I really feel like we covered both ends of science today, from fighting fires above to discovering the oceans below. It was a really fun episode today, you guys, and if you want to see more like it, be sure to tune in next time here on Tech Now. Dive deep into these stories and go behind the scenes at aljazeera.com slash techno. Follow our expert contributors on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and more.